Hello and what is going on YouTube, it's Duoscape here and today I have for you a range upgrade guide for RuneScape 3. This video is going to be showing you the upgrades that you should take when it comes to range, taking into consideration three main things. Firstly, how much the upgrade costs. Secondly, the utility that you receive from the upgrade. And finally, the ease of access of the upgrade. For argument's sake, if the upgrade requires a high level of skill that newer players are unlikely to have, it may be pushed up further into the list as you aren't going to reap the full utility out of that upgrade at that current stage of the game. A prime example of this would be the Eldritch Crossbow. Despite being an extreme increase in DPS due to its amazing special attack and tier 92 damage, it's not as easy to get the full utility out of that spec without being tick perfect when it comes to soul split flicking. And because of this, upgrades like the Seren God Bow may be moved in front purely due to the fact that it's easier to use for newer players. Another thing that isn't directly taken into consideration with this guide is the utility that each upgrade may offer to other combat styles. This is assuming that you're investing directly into range and not any other style at the same time. If you'd like a guide that shows you which upgrades you should make that are good for a well-rounded account, then feel free to drop in the comment section below and I'll get to making that for you guys in the future. An example of this would be the Limitless Sigil, which provides insane utility for both Mage and Melee, however due to Hydrix Bolts being a thing, alongside Chromium 4 with Ricochet, are significantly less useful when it comes to range as a style specifically. And finally, before we get into the guide, in a similar vein to the previous two examples, there are a lot of upgrades in the game that do not benefit every single boss. These are all things that we're going to cover in this video, so let's get straight into it. Firstly, I'm going to expect that you guys have at least tier 70 gears and weaponry. These are all relatively easy to obtain, either through quests or cheaply bought in a grand exchange. And as a minimum, I'd recommend you beginning this journey with God Wars Dungeon 1 armor such as Armadil and either a crystal bow or an augmented ranged sun spear as a starting point for your account. So the first upgrade that you're going to be wanting to get is the Royal Crossbow, and this is a tier 80 range weapon that benefits from the criminal bolts and is relatively cheap at only 375,000 GP. In order to obtain this, you need to get the Coral Crossbow, which is an untradeable bow but is freely obtained after completing the Song from the Depths quest. You then need to combine this with the four Royal Crossbow parts that are dropped by the Queen Black Dragon, the Royal Bolt Stabilizer, the Royal Frame, Royal Sight, and finally the Royal Tours and Spring. You require 70 smithing in order to forge this, which can be boosted, and 60 summoning to enter the QBD lair. If you're a low level and are scared of killing the Queen Black Dragon, the crossbow can actually be forged in practice mode. And in order to forge it, you simply need to last until the final phase of the fight and stand in the middle of the arena when she uses her extremely hot dragon fire attack, which will create the Royal Crossbow. This is a big upgrade in the early game whilst being relatively cheap, so definitely get your hands on one of these. The next upgrade on the list is going to be the Wyvern Crossbow, which is a tier 85 range weapon which also benefits from the criminal bolts. This will set you back approximately 108 million GP. The crossbow also has a chance to deal a damage over time effect in the form of poison damage, which deals more damage the longer the player is attacking their target, stacking all the way up to 10 tiers of poison damage. If you wanted to, you could actually purchase the Noxious Bow at this point to get an upgrade to a tier 90 range weapon. However, please be aware that you cannot benefit from the criminal bolts when using bows. Hence why it's not in this guide, as the DPS increase from using the criminal bolts such as Ruby, Onyx or Hydrix are all extremely powerful when it comes to PvM. You're also going to want to augment this and put on some entry level perks in the form of Equilibrium 4 which will cost you approximately 756,000 by combining 8 time worn components and will result in a 5.3% damage increase. You'll also want to put on Precise 6 which costs 1.8 million by using 9 historic components and gives you a 9% damage increase overall. I think a really important thing for newer players to understand, perks are almost always a bigger increase in damage than actually upgrading your weapon tiers itself, hence why they're third on the list. You also do not need to complete archaeology in order to get these, you can simply buy the blueprints in the grand exchange and then have the required invention level simply to make them, bypassing the need to do any archaeology on your account. Upgrade number four is going to be the Corruption Shot ability, which is unlocked by consuming a Mazcav ability codex, and it will unlock another basic ability, which applies a five hit bleed on the opponent. The initial hit will hit anywhere between 33 and 100% ability damage, decreasing by 20% of the initial hit, while spreading to adjacent targets in a three by three area. This will set you back approximately 39.5 million. However, the value of having an extra basic ability to use in your rotation is invaluable, hence why it's number four on the list. Upgrade number 5 is where I'm going to recommend you getting your first tier 90 range weapon in the form of Ascension Crossbows. Optimally at the end of the game you'll want to be using dual wield and a two hand range weapon in your rotation so that you can benefit from both abilities unique to their styles such as Needle Strike and Dazing Shot which will further increase your damage. Ascension Crossbows also benefit from the criminal bolts and are going to be your best in slot weapon for a long time. I'd personally recommend keeping your Wyvern Crossbow or if you purchased it Noxious Bow to use as a dazing swap. 
These are going to set you back approximately 420 million, and you're going to want to put precise six and equilibrium four on these. Having dual wood crossbows also enable you to benefit from using mechanized chin chompers, which are useful at various bosses in the game, for example, Barrow's Rise of the Six, and a significant number of Slayer mobs, such as Shadow Hills. Next up for upgrade number six, I'm going to recommend that you get your Planted Feet switch. For those of you unaware what Planted Feet does, it extends your Sunshine Stroke Death Swiftness duration by 25% giving you an extra 7.8 seconds of your ultimate ability, resulting in an overall increase in damage of 6.5%. You're going to want to put these on an offhand Shadow Glaive or an Augmented Sun Spear. If you choose to use it on an Augmented Sun Spear, you benefit from this Planted Feet switch on both your Magic and your Range gear. However, I'd heavily recommend putting this on a Shadow Glaive, purely due to the fact that this will give you more utility at high level PVM. This perk combination is only going to set you back 4 million, and it's used by using two Cyware components. You can also pair this with Aftershock 1, so that you don't lose your Aftershock stacks, but this is more important later on when you actually have Aftershock on your gear. The earlier that you get your Planted Feet switch and get in the habit of using it every single time you use a Death Swiftness, the better. I'd recommend getting this after you get your Ascension Crossbows, however you can get this as early as you'd like, without doing too much harm, as it's going to give you a great DPS increase and get you into good habits for the future. Time to ditch the tier 70 armor deal and get yourself a set of Serenic armor. This is the tier 90 ranged power armor gear, which degrades to dust. It's dirt cheap right now and set you back approximately 40 million. I'd also get out of the habit of being scared to use armor that degrades to dust. It's ridiculously cheap and by the time you fully deplete all of your armor charges, you would have made back your money 20 times. So it's 100% worth using. At this current point in the game, you're also gonna to wanna to grab yourself a pair of Pernix boots and Pernix gloves. They're both relatively inexpensive at five mil a piece and will give you some extra bonus range stats. Once you get your tier 90 power armor, do not equip it. If you equip it, it will become untradeable and you'll be unable to augment it. I'd recommend straight away going to the Invention Guild and augmenting your Serenic Armor and getting on the following perks that I'm about to suggest. As previously mentioned, the perks are invaluable in this game and are just as important as upgrading the gear itself. And the four perks that you're going to want to get at this stage of the game is Crackling 4 and Relentless 4 on the same perk, which is approximately a 1 in 20 chance costing you 20.8 million and is made by using 8 vintage components. Enhanced Devoted 4 is also a great tool to have for any single combat style in the game. It will heavily decrease the amount of damage that you take by giving you a chance of making it so that your protection prayers are 100% effective for a few seconds. This will set you back 4.3 million and takes 8 faceted components in order to be made. This will cost you just over 9 million and will give you the chance to get you some extra bonus adren when using basic abilities, effectively letting you get to your ultimate and thresholds even quicker. And finally, I'd recommend you get in Biting 2 and Venom Blood for now, as this is relatively inexpensive at 400,000. And by this point in the game, you're probably going to be doing bosses such as a Rex or a Nex, where Venom Blood is extremely useful. After you've done this, you're going to have three of the best in slot perks in the game, in the form of Crackling, Relentless, Enhanced Devoted, and Impatient 4. Towards the end game, you may opt to actually pair your Impatient 4 with some other bonus perks. You can pair it with Undead Slayer, Mobile, Demon Slayer, and Dragon Slayer. Upgrade number 8, and I'm sure many of you were expecting this very soon, is the Essence of Finality. This is the best in slot amulet that you can have in the game, and it combines the effects of the Reaper Necklace and the Amulet of Souls. This will give you up to a 3% boost in accuracy, which will increase your overall damage at bosses where accuracy is important. Soul Split will heal 18.75% more, and this also stacks with the Eldritch Crossbow, which you're going to be acquiring later on in your journey. It will also give you a 10% more immunity from your Protection Prayers meaning that you're going to be taking less damage when doing PVM. And the most powerful thing about this amulet, besides the insane perks that it gives and the best in slot amulet stats in the game, is the fact that it can store special attack weapons. For those of you that have been living under a rock, this is insanely OP and is pretty much changed and shifted the meta for every single boss in game. At this current stage in the game, I'd recommend putting a dark bow in here specifically for range, as this will give you a powerful ability to add to your rotation. This will set you back approximately 295 million with current prices. Now that we've got our essence of finality, we can move on to upgrade number 9, Biting 4. Biting 4 will make it so that every hit that you land has an 8% chance of critting, and this will result in a 5.07% damage increase overall, and can be further increased to 5.57% when you reach item level 20. The non-risky way of getting this is by using 7 noxious components, as seen on the screen, and this will set you back 55.1 mil. However, you can actually pair Biting 4 with some really useful perks that will boost your damage or all your abilities in-game. First up, we have Biting 4 paired with Undead Slayer. If you're going to be doing the Third Elite Dungeon or Barrow's Rise of the Six, I'd heavily recommend getting this, as it's going to give you a flat 7% damage increase against undead creatures. This will set you back 111 mil and can be made by using 7 Noxious Components, an Undead Component, and a Living Component. 
Next up, we have Biting 4 Dragon Slayer. For anyone out there that does a lot of dragon killing in the form of Queen Black Dragon, King Black Dragon, or more importantly, Elite Dungeon 2, will want to have this on their gear. This will set you back 97 million and is made by using 7 Noxious components and 2 Dragonfire components. Next up, and a bit more of a niche item, is Biting 4 paired with Demon Slayer. There ain't too many demon bosses at the end game, so this isn't really too useful. The only place that I can think you'll be using this at the late game is killing Ripper Demons while using Chinchompers. This will set you back approximately 108 million and is made by using 7 Noxious components paired with 2 Third Age components. And the final combination that I'd recommend you get in is Biting 4 paired with Mobile. This will set you back 183 million and is made with the following combination on screen. I wouldn't recommend actually getting this on your gear because for most PVM you're going to be bringing a bladed dive switch which you're probably going to have mobile on anyways, making this significantly less useful than you think. But it does have a place in the game for those that don't like bringing switches everywhere. Another thing I'd like to add with these combo perks is that if you fail you have a pretty good chance of still getting biting 4 on its own, which in a worst case scenario you can still use. This is really specific to what bosses you like to do in the game and I'd recommend you pick him really carefully. No worries if you choose to get one and not the other because you can simply just make another set of legs and put these on them later on. Next up another powerful perk that you can add to your arsenal is Flanking 4. Flanking 4 will replace your Binding Shot and Tight Bindings abilities to lose their stun but deal an increased amount of damage. Basic stuns will now deal 260% damage and threshold stuns will deal 320% damage. You have to be behind or to the side of the opponent in order to get the benefit from flanking. This is going to be one of your strongest abilities in the game so don't sleep on this as it is extremely powerful at any tier level of bossing. If you are a solo player that doesn't do a lot of group content there are a few niches of where you can actually get utility out of flanking for. But if you aren't going to be doing group content I'd probably recommend skipping this and getting it when you do. At this point in the game you're going to want to put this on an offhand glaive and it will set you back approximately 27.8 million. You made this by using 9 clockwork components in a gizmo, and the best way to get this is actually to lower your level of invention down to 52 to 55. Do not do this without lowering your stats or using invention potions, as it will highly decrease the chance of you getting flanking 4 and will cost you significantly more in the long run. Upgrade 11 is where it heavily depends on the content that you like doing. So the three things that I have here are Nightmare Gauntlets, Fleeting Boots and Cinderbane Gloves. Fleeting Boots enable it so that you can move while using Rapid Fire, which while being re relatively useless is pretty much cosmetic as you could simply just time it so that your Rapid Fire is used when you wouldn't be needing to move in the first place. For newer players I definitely recommend getting these now as they're relatively cheap and they'll enable you to focus more on boss mechanics and not having to worry about cancelling your strong abilities. In a similar sense Nightmare Gauntlets enable you to move while using a snipe ability. Snipe is a relatively strong basic but these gloves really shine in the sense that they increase your snipe accuracy. This is extremely important at bosses where you're highly likely to splash. For example Nex, Farago, Barrow's Rise of the Six, just to name a few. If you're not going to be doing any of these older bosses and are more going to be focused on say elite dungeons, I'd probably recommend not getting Nightmare Gauntlets for now. The other big factor when it comes to choosing which gloves to get is whether or not the opponent that you're going to be fighting is susceptible to weapon poison. As in any scenario, even at the end of the game, if your opponent is susceptible to weapon poison you want to opt to bring Cinderbane gloves over Nightmare Gauntlets. Cinderbane gloves also benefit all three combat styles and due to the fact that a lot of bosses in the game are susceptible to weapon poison you're probably going to want to opt to get these first. Don't get me wrong, Nightmare Gauntlets and Fleeting Boots are extremely nice quality of life items that overall make range feel less clunky. So I definitely recommend getting them at some point along your journey and due to the fact that the next load of upgrades are going to be extremely expensive I'd recommend getting them now. Even if you aren't going to use them you probably will at some point in the game so just get them out of the way so that you know you have them. Next up on the list we have Greater Ricochet. I'm pretty sure all of you know what this ability does but for those of you that don't I'll quickly explain it. Basically Greater Ricochet makes it so that if your Ricochet cannot hit multiple targets all of the hits will hit the primary target dealing 10 to 50% weapon damage. This makes this ability up to a 400% damaging basic ability, which is absolutely insane and far outclasses most of the thresholds in the game for range. Hence why it has a higher price point of 1.5 billion GP. This ability also becomes really strong when paired with criminal bolts. For example, when using this with onyx bolts, it has a chance to proc on all seven of them, which will result in even further damage and it will heal you a ton. This is also true for hydrix bolts. You're going to want to compare this with chromium 4. Do not hesitate on getting this. Make sure that you can get this as soon as you get your Greater Ricochet ability as this will overall make your ability 10 times stronger. Chromium 4 on its own costs approximately 38 million, however you really want to get Chromium 4 paired with Equilibrium 2 as this will give you an even greater damage boost. For now you're going to want to put this on your offhand Ascension Crossbow 
However, later on in the game, you're going to want to transfer this over using an equipment separator and putting it on your Eldritch Crossbow. You can make Chromium 4 Equilibrium 2 by using 7 Shadow Components with, with free Time Warm, and this will set you back approximately 113 million. The next upgrade that I'm going to recommend you get in is the Tier 99 Prayer Desolation. This increases your range attack by 12, increases range damage by 12%, and range defense by 12. This will result in up to a 4% damage increase and it will set you back approximately 715 million. The reason I've put this before your tier 92 weapons, because when you look at the raw stats of tier 92s, it's going to be a bigger upgrade. However, when you factor in the ability to use special attacks such as the Eldritch Crossbow Split Soul and the Seren God Bow Crystal Rain, this is going to be less of an upgrade. However, due to the fact that this is significantly cheaper, and it requires no effort or skill, simply all you have to do is turn the prayer on to receive its full effect. That is why I'm putting this at upgrade spot number 13. Sticking to the trend of ridiculously expensive items, which you knew before clicking this video, is the Seren God Bow. This is a tier 92 range weapon, which gives you the Crystal Rain special attack, which is a special attack that shoots 5 arrows up in the air. This special attack has a 30 second cooldown, and the larger the NPC, the higher chance the arrows have to actually hit it. Because of this, it is most effective when used on bosses with a 3x3 or larger area. For bosses such as Araxor, this is extremely useful. In the beginning of the fight, in a death swiftness, on Araxor himself, you can average 27,000 damage in a death swiftness every single time you use this special attack, assuming the boss isn't moving. This increases to 41,000 damage on average when in a death swiftness on Araxi at the end of the fight because it is technically a blocked NPC. At any boss that's bigger than a 3x3, this ability is extremely valuable and will overall increase your damage greatly as you can use it every 30 seconds. It's so strong in fact it's actually worth using with other combat styles, using Ingenuity to humans to guarantee that it hits. So this is going to be a big upgrade from the Ascension Crossbows just in terms of damage and the fact that you actually have a longer range when it comes to fighting enemies, which is extremely useful when doing most bosses in the game. And the reason I put this before the Eldritch Crossbow is because it's over 1 billion GP cheaper at 1.65 billion. Due to the fact that you're not able to benefit from the Criminal Bolts with this, I'd probably recommend actually selling this when you get enough to get your Eldritch Crossbow and then buying it after your Eldritch Crossbow as your next upgrade. The main reason this is before the Eldritch Crossbow is because the special attack doesn't really take much skill to actually use. Whereas the Eldritch Crossbow spec Split Soul requires a fair amount of skill to actually get the full amount of utility out of it, especially on bosses that have higher attack rates. Speaking of which, the Eldritch Crossbow is what I'm going to recommend as upgrade number 15. When you have enough, as I previously mentioned, you're going to want to sell your Seren God Bow in order to buy this and then repurchase it when you have enough. This is another tier 92 range weapon but this one benefits from the criminal bolts which as most of you are aware is a huge damage increase when using range. Where the Eldritch Crossbow really shines is the fact that it gives you the split soul special attack which similar to melee Zaro's God Sword effectively makes it so you can do significantly more damage when outside of your death swiftness. That being said due to there being no cooldown on the amount of times you can use split soul you can actually use this in the second half of your death swiftness to even further boost your damage. For 15 seconds when using split soul, your soul split heals 4 times the amount of damage that it would have been healing you instead. There is a trade off here, you will not gain any heals and any damage that you will take will be hit through soul split as you won't be praying the correct prayer. Hence why you need the ability to be able to prayer swap efficiently when using this. The thing is, you can't really master this skill until you have the Eldritch Crossbow, so you're going to want to get this in order to get better and perfect it. Once you get used to it, and you compare this with bolts such as onyx bolts, the amount of health that you lose from not having your soul split heals isn't as much as you would think in the beginning. This is going to set you back a massive 2.75 billion GP, and you're going to want to swap your Chromium 4 Equilibrium 2 over to this Eldritch Crossbow, pairing it with Precise 6. After your Eldritch Crossbow, you're going to want to get your Limitless Sigil. This is created by using 2,000 vital sparks and has a 90 second cooldown. Once you activate it, it enables you the ability to use thresholds without having 50% adrenaline and this will last over the course of 6 seconds, enabling you to get out most of your main thresholds without the need of an adrenaline pot. Unfortunately, the meta nowadays since you, when you have Chromium 4 and Greater Ricochet is to use Hydrox Bolts on your Ricochet as soon as you Death Swiftness, which will more times than not give you enough adrenaline to get these thresholds out anyways. Next up on the list at upgrade number 17 is getting the best in slot perks on your weapons in the form of Aftershock 4 and Equilibrium 2. Do not settle for just Aftershock 4 as it is only marginally better than Equilibrium 4 by itself. Aftershock 4 triggers a 3x3 area of effect blast dealing on average 127.2% damage for every 50,000 damage that you deal. On your main hand ascensions you will want Precise 6 Aftershock 1. This makes it so that you do not lose your Aftershock stacks when swapping to your flank, Chromium switch or shield. This can be obtained by using 7 Armadil components and 2 Aluna Junkin components and will cost you on average 40 million. 
On your offhand crossbow, you will want to have Aftershock 4 and Equilibrium 2, and this is made by using 6 Alunar Junkin components and 3 Time Worn components, and will cost you on average 112.3 million GP. And for your Eldritch crossbow, you will want to have Precise 6 Aftershock 1 paired with Chromium 4 Equilibrium 2, which will set you back in total 162.3 million GP on average. If you follow this guide up to this point, you will already have Chromium 4 Equilibrium 2 on this. Simply swap your Precise 6 for Precise 6 Aftershock 1. This will be your last perk changes to your weapons, assuming you do not opt to put your Eldritch Crossbow inside an Essence of Finality, which we will talk about later. Upgrade number 17 is to store your Saren God Bow inside an Essence of Finality. This is your second EOF that you will acquire for range and enables you to benefit from both the Criminal Bolts and the ECB Special Attack when using the SGB Special. This will set you back a hefty 1.94 billion GP and cannot be reobtained. Please also note that this makes the SGB less easy to use with other combat styles due to the need of an extra switch and needing bolts at all times. For upgrade number 19, it's time to ditch the Ascension crossbows and get yourself a set of Blightbound crossbows. These are the best in slot dual wield tier 92 bows that benefit from the criminal bolts and have a 25% chance per bow to save the criminal bolts when ranging. Do not sleep on this effect, as with the price of bolts at the moment, this will pay for itself in the long run. These will set you back 2.47 billion GP. For upgrade number 20, you want to ditch the offhand Shadow Glade flanking switch and acquire a tier 90 flank in the form of an offhand Ascension crossbow. This will increase your average flank damage and will set you back 218 million GP, making it significantly less useful for range as a combat style in general. However, you will get the benefit of using this for melee and mage, hence why it's an upgrade spot number 16. So now we're getting into the end game. Upgrade 21 is putting your Eldritch Crossbow inside your Essence of Finality. Let's first look at what this upgrade brings to the table. It enables you to use defensives, flanking abilities and needle strike whilst ECB specking. This can be extremely useful as you are not limited to when you can use certain abilities, enabling you to use them more freely off global cooldown. Also at times when you need to use defensives such as Resonance you can freely do so without losing your special attack. You can now also use an Eldritch Special Attack whilst using Mechanized Chin Chompers to maximize your AoE damage output. And where this really shines is when it comes to Aftershock 4. Previously you would be only benefiting from Aftershock 1 when in an Eldritch Special. Whereas now you have the full benefit of Aftershock 4 at all times when you're PVMing. This is significant as when using an optimal rotation with range, you're going to be ECB spec'd quite often. Unfortunately, this has a huge cost of 3.3 billion GP, as you are going to need to buy another Essence of Finality, which you will sink your Eldritch Crossbow into. You will also need a Chromium 4 switch in the form of an offhand Ascension Crossbow, which due to the fact that you already have one for your flanking switch, you will need to apply a die to it, the cheapest being a Barrow's die. And finally, you will need to replace the Eldritch Crossbow with another two-handed range weapon to use as a dazing switch and to force out auto attacks. This will also need to have Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2. This is an investment that you cannot reverse, so only do so if you're fully committed to min-maxing range as a combat style. The other commitment you'll be making by doing this is to delve further into Switchscape, as you are now required to swap to your Chromium Switch every 10 seconds, alongside another Essence of Finality to juggle between your Seren God Bow and Dark Bow. I personally would only recommend doing this upgrade if you want to min-max your account and reach the highest level of damage output in the game. For the casual PVMer, the cost alongside the additional actions per minute are not worth the investment in my opinion. You can achieve a very high damage output without using this, however it is objectively best in slot to have this amulet in your arsenal. For upgrade number 22 you want to invest in Elite Serenic. This is the best in slot tier 92 ranged armour and can be repaired using Elite Serenic repair patches. However do not let it reach 0% before doing so as it will degrade to dust. Similar to all tier 92 armours, it doesn't degrade when doing Elite Dungeons, however it will significantly increase your death costs. This alongside the negligible increase in damage is why it is so low on the list. With current prices, this will set you back 860 million GP, and until they rework death costs, I wouldn't recommend buying this. Upgrade 23 is to swap flanking 4 to flanking 4 equilibrium 1. This is so low on the list as flank already reaches cap very often, therefore you do not gain much benefit from this, and it will cost you 177 million GP. And finally, the last upgrade is a tier 92 Chromium switch which will increase your average damage when using Greater Ricochet, and this will require an offhand Blightbound Crossbow and a Barrow's Die, costing you 1.65 billion GP. Hopefully this guide has helped you along your journey to max range gear. Please note that it is very hard to make an order that pleases everyone, as every upgrade will change place depending on the skill level of the player, the content that they do, and their preferences in-game. If I made this solely to resemble top tier players, it will be useless to most of the community, and these players will probably already know what is optimal and what is not. 
This guy took a ton of time to edit and produce, so if you found it useful, drop a like on the video and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more RuneScape free content to help better your account. Most importantly, if you disagree with something in this listing, please voice your opinion in the comment section down below so that other players can watch this video alongside the discussions in the comments to help assist them when it comes to deciding what to upgrade and when along their grind.